Suppose we have an RC circuit. Let's figure out what happens as it charges and discharges. So we start with a 24 volt battery, a switch one and a switch two. At time zero, we're gonna close switch one, which causes the capacitor to start getting charged. Before it finishes, we're gonna open the switch again. And then we're gonna close switch two and it's gonna discharge for a bit and then after a certain amount of time, we're gonna say, okay, how much charge is there? First of all, tau number one for charging is gonna be R times C. When it's charging, we've got 1500 ohms and 500 ohms. We've got 2000 ohms and 500 microfarad. That works out to be one second. For the discharging, we're going to have 600 ohms and 500 microfarads. So that's going to be 0 0.3 seconds. Once we close the switch at time zero, how much charge is going to be on the capacitor? Q as a function of T when we're charging up is going to be the Q max times one minus E to the minus T over tau. All right, first, what is Q max? If we were to wait a really long time so that e to the minus infinity is zero, and we would end up with q max, that happens when the current stops flowing. That would mean that this capacitor is getting all 24 volts because if there's no current, there's no volts on the resistors, right? If there's no current, a resistor might as well be a wire. That means the q max, we're not gonna reach it, but the q max is CV, 0.012 coulombs. The maximum charge this, is, this could reach if we let it is gonna be 0 0.012 coulombs, but we're not going to let it. We're only going to let it charge for two seconds and then we're gonna stop it. So the Q at two seconds is going to be the Q max 0 0.012 coulombs times one minus E to the negative two seconds divided by the tau, we worked out the tau is one second. 0.8647 times 0.012, and we get 0.0104 coulombs. That's how much charge it has on the capacitor. That's what happens at two seconds when we open switch one. Now, when we open switch one, everything stops. The charge is trapped, it's got no place to go. Then a second later, at time equals three seconds, we close this switch. So now it's gonna start discharging. And for discharging, the Q at a time T is gonna be Q zero times E to the negative T over tau. So now we're going to have Q zero E to the negative T over the new time constant is 0.3 seconds. The Q zero is this 0 0.0104 coulombs. And so we have e to the negative one second, t is one. I know the time on the clock is four, but the amount of time it has been since you closed the switch is one second. It's had one second's worth of discharging. So that's e to the minus one second over 0 0.3 seconds, which is 3.71 times 10 to the negative four coulombs or 371 micro coulombs. That's how much charge is left from the 0.01 coulombs because so much of it went away because it decayed for three time constants. That's enough to get the vast majority of the charge gone. We can also ask other questions. While this thing was charging back at t equals one second, how much was the current? The current starts out rapid and then decays. Whether you're charging or discharging, the current is always dropping off exponentially. So the current is equal to current zero e to the minus t over tau. That's a familiar expression. Now, what is the starting current? The starting current is when there's no charge on the capacitor. If there's no charge, there's no volts, which means all the volts, the 24 volts, are across the 2,000 ohms. So V equals IR gives us 24 volts is the current times 2000 ohms. And so that's 0.012 amps. That is the I zero. 
So the current as a function of time here is going to be 0.012 amps e to the minus t over tau. Now we are saying 0.012 amps and we're saying one second in and the time constant is one. So that's minus one second over one second. So that's 0.012 amps times e to the negative one, which is 0.0441 amps or 44.1 milliamps. Likewise, we could ask what's the voltage across the 1500 ohm resistor? And that would just be V equals IR. That would be the current times 1500, and it would be 6.62 volts. We could also ask, based on the original scenario, what does the charge look like as a function of time if we graph it? Now, the ramping up part looks like this. It ramps up for two seconds, and then we open to the switch again. So then the charge stops ramping up, it stays constant, until three seconds. And then at three seconds, we started rapidly discharging it. And then at four seconds, we asked how much charge there was. So that's roughly what the graph would look like. If we were trying to plot the current, well, the current will always start out high and start dropping off like 0.012 amps is its maximum. It would drop off to 0.04 and then keep dropping off. And then when we open the switch, the current immediately drops to zero. And then at three seconds, we start getting a current going the other way, coming off of the capacitor. With the same given charge, the same voltage on the capacitor, a smaller resistance will mean a bigger current. We'd get a larger discharge but it would drop off much faster. So that's roughly what the current would look like as a function of time. One more thing we could ask, how much energy is on the capacitor at say time equals one second again, during the charging part? The energy could be written as one half QV. That could also be written as one half CV squared or it could be written as q squared over 2c, and that's probably the easiest for us. We could find the charge and then use the capacitance. The charge after one second, when it's charging up, would be the maximum charge, 0.012 coulomb, times one minus e to the minus one second over charging one second. So one minus e to the negative one times 0.012 is 0 0.00758 coulombs. And then the energy at t equals one second would simply be 0 0.00758 coulombs squared over two times 500 microfarad. And we get 0 0.0575 joules. Well, that covered a lot of possibilities for a charging-discharging RC circuit.